So here we go everyone, it is time for the biggest episode of the series so far. Welcome to episode 8 of our realistic Borussia Dortmund career mode. So here we are then, ready to go. We have two lot of comms for you in this episode today. It is the first leg and the second leg of the Champions League semi-final against Villa Real. If you haven't seen any of the previous episodes before this one, I highly advise you go and watch those ones first before coming on to this, um, as you will just receive a lot of spoilers and you'll miss out a lot of good stuff. Um, welcome along though to you guys who are resuming with the series. Really exciting, um, that it, it, it's just been really good so far um, and it's going to continue today hopefully. This is the biggest game that Dortmund would have played since I guess the Champions League final of 2013 when of course they did play uh, Bayern Munich, um, you know, win this and well, anything is possible, it really is. As you can see here, there's also another semi-final occurring, and it is two other Spanish teams. It's three Spanish teams out of four in the semi-finals, which is pretty, pretty um, crazy, I guess. Uh, and it's Atletico Madrid and Barcelona. They're currently drawing 1-1 with the second leg to play, so that is worth um, keeping an eye on. But what about our opponents today? What has been their journey so far? Well, they came through a relatively tough group um, with Manchester United and also Atalanta, as well as Young Boys. They finished second in that group, but have really gone on to one strength from another. They beat um, RB Salzburg in the round of 16, and then they beat Chelsea in the quarterfinals as well, 4-1 on aggregate. Also worth noting that they also won the UEFA Super Cup this season against Chelsea as well. So they've really had the beating of them, and they've already had a very successful season. So these guys are actually going to be a very tough game, and I'm expecting it to go right to the wire. As for this episode overall, we of course have the two games against Villarreal. We're also going to sim uh, Bochum in the middle of that as well. Um, so it's going to be three games overall. We'll talk about the league season when we do get to that Bochum game a little bit later. But let's not beat around the bush too much with this. We want to get into this game. Really excited. Let me show you the lineups. The 4-4-2, the Unai Emery 4-4-2 in place for Villarreal. Very good players there. Moreno in particular one I'm keeping an eye on. Pareo as well is going to spearhead that central midfield these are a good side um, as for us we are going for the 3 4 one, 2 I believe we can not only outnumber them in the center of the park with that uh, you know mismatch of midfield options the three against the two but also we can isolate both of their center backs as well with Haaland and Marlon, they've only got two at the back with Torres and Mandy I think we can have a lot of joy there now obviously we are um, sort of conceding space down the flanks because they can overlap on us and double up on our on our wing backs um, but that is the risk I'm taking today I think that we can have some success with this in terms of the lineup itself not really many surprises I guess Namdi Collins can feel hard done by but I wanted to go for a little bit of experience in Emre Chan and we ended up preferring Bella Kochap over Namdi Collins in the end other than that it's a very um, I guess predictable lineup you could say but one that I have full faith in we are ready for the Champions League anthem. Also worth bearing in mind, all the Liga stadiums are on this game as well. So that's pretty exciting. We've got Villarreal Stadium here. Lots of good decorations up and TIFOs. Atmosphere is building. Right then, it is going to be a tough game. I think they're really going to put it on us today. Um, and I think they could actually shock us. I imagine we go into this game as favourites. But it certainly isn't a given. So let's see how this one plays out. He's going to hit space. He'll shift it out wide. Aaron's looking to get out to him. Oh, he's found space in the middle here. He'll go for goal and it's an early goal for Villarreal. I think it's Gerard Moreno. No, it's Paco Alsasa in the end. And he fires it past Cobo, who isn't going to get to that one. Disappointing defending from our perspective. Let's have a look at the replay here and see how it really unfolds. He finds a bit of space and no one really approaches him. Disappointing with three centre-backs that he can 
have that sort of time and space to be able to get that away. It's a good finish, take nothing away from that as he puts his laces through it. But we have to defend better in those situations. 1-0 early on and a very disappointing start. Bellingham, found space, looking for Haaland. He's got him as well, get Haaland onto his better foot. Oh. Whoa, that one was close. Keeper taking a bit of a risk on his line. Almost looking to step up now. Can Dahoud close him down? Oh, we've got Parejo who's made the run in behind. He threw on goal. Unleashes it past Kerbal and it's 2-0. What a terrible start this has been. Parejo, who's a very so player, somehow finds all of that space. He's able to run in behind. The fact that he can beat Emre Chan, I think it is, that is extremely disappointing. He should not be able to penetrate the back line like that. So, so poor. How on earth has this happened? And what a terrible start this has been. Defence. We've got to wake up. Come on, guys. Centre-back's letting me down. Really poor. Oh, well done. Guerrero wins the ball. Can we hit them on the break now? Marlon. Haaland. Looking for a return here. And he's going to find him as well. Marlon's got great pace. And this is a brilliant opportunity. Marlon looking to get it onto his right foot. Oh, his touch may have taken him away. And he wins a corner. But that's extremely poor. That is a fantastic opportunity. And Marlon... Fluffs his lines. Guerrero. Got to lock off that pass to that player. We need more men to, to help out here. Bella Chap. Oh, he's found space again. And somehow that's gone in. This is really poor. It's so, so bad. I don't know what's happening. We have completely fell apart here. We are just all over the place. Again, defending. Centre-back just standing around. And they allow him so much space and time. We're so deep. You know, we're nearly in our six-yard box. Please just push out a little bit. Keeper should also do better as he gets a tip to that one. And it's 3-0. And already we're looking like this tie could be well and truly done. Can you win that? We can. Royce. Bellingham. Guerrero. Finds Royce in space. Looking to feed it through. Haaland gets in behind. Really good run. Can he score? It's a poor finish. Keeper deals with it. We still recover the ball. Comes out to Marlon. He'll go for goal. Off the bar. What an opportunity that we have in a short amount of time. Two fantastic chances. Oh, it's just not going to go our way, is it, this tie? I can tell as the referee calls half-time. It's just not going to go our way. Already seeing this tie going only one way. And as we do reach half-time as well, as you see there, I've really... Um, you know, controlled the game. We need to impose ourselves on this more, which is why we've got to go for a more extreme pressing tactic now. We are going to actually have to boost the line, even though our centre backs are, you know, they're running in behind us. We have to, um, you know, uh, because otherwise it's just not going to happen. We're also going to boost our corners and free kicks to five each as well. Um, and on top of that, I think um, if we look, probably going to have to make a substitution or two. Only one substitution actually in the end because I don't really see enough on the bench that's going to help us change the game. We're going to bring on Schultz for Guerrero. Hopefully that added pace down the left-hand side can really help us. He's also been running in behind a few times as well for the opposition I've been getting in behind him. Um, so hopefully Schultz can, can deal with that with his pace. Other than that, there's not too much I can do in terms of bringing players off the bench. So let's see how this one goes. Oh, he's managed to get in behind somehow. And this could be four. Good save from the keeper. Got to get it away. It's another save from Cobble. What is going on? The defending is all over the place. Dear me. Royce into Marlon. Needs that run from Haaland. And he's got him as well. This is a good chance. Haaland, it's saved again. I can't believe this. Out to Bellingham. Can he score? Deflected. And out for a corner. Nothing is going right in this game. Oh, they're going to hit us on the counter now. Paco El Sacer. A lot of space for him in the middle here. Played him offside. I've just played him offside. I've just done offside trap. Oh, my word. I just pressed offside trap. They all went off. What is going on? Oh. Let's have a look at the replay because I want to know what's going on here because I've pressed offside trap. We need to find a better camera angle as well so I can find out really what happened. This one will work. So I press off side trap here and you see all my players run forward. But for some reason, what is he doing? What on earth? Let me find out who that is. It's Emre Chan. What on earth is Emre Chan doing? All my players run up except for him. 
and then he just keeps running back. So what is the point of me even playing offside? What is the point of offside track being a thing on this game? Look at that. Look at all the other players step up. So what? Oh my god. And as they uh, pass it the pitch, probably going to be uh, full time. Yeah. So yeah, what a terrible, terrible game. Not a lot to say. As you can see, I'm quite deflated about that. Nothing went right. Absolutely nothing. We couldn't string three passes together. My players were like, had moments where they weren't even sprinting. They were like jogging, even though I was holding down RT. Um, you know, obviously all them chances that we missed, just none of them were going to go in, were they? Um, you know, we really could have had three, maybe. Um, you know, centre-backs just standing there. Obviously that offside trap issue as well. So many issues. We've got absolutely destroyed. Um, look at that, you know, couldn't... String passes together, couldn't get a spell of possession. Extremely poor. Worst performance of the season. That is horrible game to play. Don't know what went wrong at all. Just everything went wrong. Every single thing that could have gone wrong went wrong. So I don't really know. I can't really explain it. It's just, you know, it's like it was just meant to be, isn't it? So we're back to the league now. And obviously, I said I was going to talk about the Bundesliga. Um, as I said, I've still not called down from that last game on. Pretty, uh, pretty annoyed with how that's gone. Um, to be honest with you, uh, just need to just need to relax a little bit. Uh, but as it is for the Bundesliga, five points behind Bayern. You know we're probably not going to catch them. Um, you know we've got Bochum today. We are going to sim this game. Um, as you can imagine, we are playing a um, much changed side. Even though it's not a lot of point because you know we're probably out of that semi final now. Um, so yeah, we're just going to quick sim this game. Hope that we can get a win. No, 1-1. One, one. Everything's just going wrong in this episode today. It's just going to be one of those days. So, well done, guys. Brilliant result. So, I'll quickly bring your attention to the league table now after that result. Still third. Um, seven points off by so that we can no longer win the league title. Not that we ever were going to. Uh, Wolfsburg still putting on their pressure, though. We're four points off them as well. So, unlikely that we do catch up to them. Um, and also four points clear of Frankfurt. We've got two games left, one against Greuther Firth and the other one against um, Hertha Berlin. So, you know, we'll really round out the season now, uh, going through the motions a little bit, I guess, um, and just hope we can, we can finish strong. So what about the second leg then? Well, there's not too much I could really do to the team. I don't have the personnel available to switch it around too much. Rain is coming for Royce, um, who once again has gone on to... Some poor form. Schultz is starting this time ahead of Guerrero. The system will remain the same. As you can see, they've made a couple of changes. That'll be all coming in. Estupinian coming in as well. Don't think Gomez played in the last game, although I can't quite remember now. Um, they've made a couple of changes. I'm guessing they're rotating for fitness purposes. Whether or not that'll make a difference, I don't know. But um, we have got it all to do. And to be honest, I can't really see us um, being able to step up in this case. But let's just see how it goes anyway and, and give it our all. Marlon needs options. Doesn't have anything. Come on, come on. Push up, push up. Schultz. Got to be quicker than that. Dear me. Schultz now in an opportunity. He's going to whip it in. Haaland's there. And there's the goal. 25 minutes in. And we do finally get a goal over the course of these two legs. Really good running. From Erling Haaland bursting into that box. It's a good ball from Nico Schultz as well. We were looking for that overlap. He finally provides the support to Marlon and Haaland. Even though it goes off the keeper, it's not a very good finish. It does sneak in. And finally, we have the first goal of the game. But a long, long way to go to claw this back. Aaron's got to come inside. Rainer. Marlon, Marlon looking for that run. A really good run from Max Ahrens. And he finds himself in. There's options across as well. Schultz is there. No, it's Rainer. And it's 2-0. 40 minutes gone. And a comeback is on. Giovanni Rainer this time. And it's lovely build at play. Down that right-hand side. Max Ahrens, whose delivery hasn't been the best so far. He's had opportunities and not taken them. This time, sends it across goal. And Giovanni Rainer, keeper gets to it yet again. And gets a tip to it. But it's not enough. And Giovanni Reiner is there with some great running from him and Marlon as well to get into that area. And it is 2-0. 40 minutes gone. There is still a chance. Oh, space. Oh, he's running in behind. And that's a goal that has pretty much killed the tie. He just finds so much space as he runs into the area. The marking on this game is just an absolute joke. It's so bad. It's just all the goals are the same. It's just always someone running in behind. Look at that. 
You know, no one follows him, no one tracks him, no one even knows he's there, and he just puts his laces through it, and they score. Same old. Um, so that has pretty much put um, put a dent in our our comeback aspirations. Ah, oh, ball given away really cheaply, but it's half time, and I don't think much will be happening here. Unfortunately, we played much better, but again, that defending, you know, they just you let them in all the time. You're just battling against the gameplay, aren't you? Um, so there's not a lot we can do. You know, if it isn't going to help me out, what what can I do? So, yep, two one, five two, an aggregate. It looks like this tie is all but over. Oh my good god! Nothing. Ah, uh, so I give up. I really give up on this game. I really give up. Ah, uh, what is the point? All the shots are the same as well. Do you notice that? Like all the, it's always like they never finesse it. They never like curl it. That went through his boot, um, and they just lace it, and it just goes in all the time. Like they never switch up the way they shoot. So you know, is what it is. Rayner, looking to find Marlon, and this is an opportunity. Can he finally score a goal? Yes, he can. Unfortunately, too little, too late though. 85th minute, and he finally takes. A one-on-one -on -one chance. Just pick the ball up. Dear me, what are you doing? Um, and it's 3-2 on the night, but unfortunately, 6-3 uh, on aggregate. So it doesn't account for anything at all. But it's nice to know that he can actually score a goal. So the referee should probably blow for full time here. He does. And in the end, heartbreak in the Champions League semi-finals. We won't be repeating the feats of that team from 1997. Unfortunately, we absolutely go crashing out in the semi-final stage 6-3 on aggregate um, you know I apologize to you guys that it's really turning into uh, me bashing the gameplay session um, because it's just been absolutely horrendous but unfortunately just the way it is you know nothing is going right it's the same issues again you know fair enough if I if I play badly and I get beaten on the on the day it can happen um, it's more the fact that it's just the same issues uh, really arising you know the players the opposition always putting their laces through it and it going in players not marking it's always just you defending on your own the ai just do not help you at all and it's always been the same and they're just not fixing this issue please please ea address this issue you know, other players have got to step up other players have got to do things also the defensive line goes so deep they're literally almost in their own six yard box when the opposition have possession in the final third they're like it doesn't work like that you know they're going to put a bit of pressure on, particularly when they come into the box. They're not just going to let them have all this space. So it's really disappointing in the end. Not a nice way um, to go out, I will say that. I would, I would have preferred it to have been, you know, fair. Um, but unfortunately, we, we just have to deal with it, don't we? It's not all doom and gloom, though, as we come into the end of the season. In the next episode, it will be sort of the end of season special. And we have the DFB Pokal final. So that is something to look forward to. Hopefully we step up a lot better than what we have in this episode because it's been absolute shambles, particularly defensively. Um, but it's not all doom and gloom. This can still be a very successful season. Obviously, semi-finals of the Champions League. If we can qualify for the Champions League and win that trophy as well, that would be a good season um, for us. And I think it would be something fantastic to build on as we look to go into next season. So, you know, it's important for me, for me um, to just keep a bit of composure just look at the bigger picture. You know, it, it has been, so far, a decent season. Um, so, you know, we have a good opportunity to really round it off in style. As for that next episode, which will be episode 9, you know, we'll probably play, do a live come of the last league game of the season, just, you know, to give it a, a quick review, really. And then we'll also obviously play the cup final as well. So that that's going to be a good one. And I hope you guys are not too put off by this episode today uh, and will return to it. Because, um, you know, it's already perking me up now, to be honest. Uh, looking forward to that final. So, you know, hopefully we can, we can do the business. As for the Champions League, in case anyone's interested, it was Atletico Madrid who eventually beat Barcelona. So they are in the what is an all-Spanish final. So, um, congratulations to them. Right then, I think on that note, we're probably going to call it a day there. Sorry that it's been a little bit of a negative episode. Hopefully, the next one will be more positive experience. Um, if you have enjoyed it, 
then please do drop a like. Uh, let me know you're enjoying it and ring the bell so you get notifications every time I upload. And don't forget to check out my second channel. I'll leave a link in the description and in the comments as well, where we're going to be covering Football Manager 2022 content as well. And I think that's going to be one that you guys do really enjoy. So make sure to go and check that out. Check out any of the links in the description, such as my link to my Twitter to give you a follow on there. Lots of updates on the channel behind the scenes that you don't see on YouTube. And also links to all of my gear. Uh, my gaming PC, my equipment, all that good stuff. They are affiliate links. It's a good way of supporting the channel because I get a little kickback um, and you don't have to spend any more money than what you already would have done. On that note, we're going to finish the video off there. So until next time, I will see you soon.